looks like our problems, all, all our problems in this country stem from implementation because we have the policies, we yeah. have the laws, we have the regulations. And that brings us to Galamse because, yeah. Mr. Bauer, you even started with that. Mm -hmm. okay. Ghana Water Company Limited has said to us that they are unable to supply water okay. because they're spending more to clean the water for us. And in fact, a documentary produced by Richard Kojonyako showed that when you take um, they showed a certain volume uh, of water that was fetched from um, the river, and about two-thirds of it was covered in silt. It was just a, th a third of that quantity of water that was pure. And so we are struggling to supply water. Fishermen are coming back with empty nets and dead fishes. Galamse is not a doyen. It's not something that just started today. Many stalwarts would argue that it's a lack of political will to actually fight this. What I want to hear from you is your argument of where this government and previous government have overpromised and underdelivered in the fight against Galamse. And then we get to what we can do about it. I'll start with you, Doc. Myself. Yeah. <laughs> well, let me, let me uh, say that I'm very uh, passionate about good, clean water. And uh, I, I, I think that it is rather unfortunate, and, and I talk as a Ghanaian more so than necessarily being MPP today, uh, because water uh, goes into homes, not just MPP homes, but all Ghanaians' homes. Mm. And, and I think that uh, we, we need to, one, be very clear in our mind that we really understand the gravity or enormity of this problem. Um, I've said in many places that the Galamse issue is Ghana's drug issue. And, and when you go to Mexico, they are not done dealing with the drugs. Mm. But you, you need a very special attention to this. And, and let me add that, unfortunately, you send, quote unquote, military and police people out there, and they are influenced by you know, the, the, the wealth in this industry. So are we going to rather change the caliber or the kind of remuneration we give to our law enforcement people who handle Galamse issue? That is one very crucial thing because in the other parts of the world, the drug enforcement unit, do they are with the police, <clears throat> their remunerations and the checks and balances are such that, you know, they, they have to be very careful. Because, you know, if your drug enforcement unit is bought by a drug campaign, you are, you are finished. Yeah. So, so what the state and all of us need to be mindful of is that, one, the law enforcement, the legal arm, uh, and what I mean by that is the judges who sit on mining issues have to be very well compensated so that they are not influenced. And, and until we... Compensated? By the state. Mm. And, and, what, what, and, and this thing is, is, is a very important way we, we, we get this fight going because by and large, a lot of our machines, <clears throat> what I mean by is state and law enforcement people who go there, and, and pardon me for, for you know, being as truthful as it is, I, I can easily be enticed looking at the kind of monies that these galamseyers make. I mean, if, if you hear the quantums, uh, you know, I, I can easily be bought. And, and, and the chiefs can easily be bought. I mean, I heard one man say that since he's been doing cocoa farming for ages, right. he's I remember never that seen that kind of money, and he gives his entire cocoa farm to the galamseyers. If they want to dig another cocoa farm that he has, he will gladly give it away. And, and, and listen, that has become <coughs> the reality. And that's why Ghana now has dropped in terms of, you know, our ranking yeah. with cocoa, cocoa production. production. <coughs> and, so, and, and, you know, from an economic standpoint, <coughs> if a ton of gold gives you X amount of money and a ton of cocoa gives you X amount of money, listen, the ordinary guy on the street, I mean, he's hustling. Uh, you know, it's a no-brainer. He'll go for the gold. After all, that one is picking, crying, and what I mean by picking clients is not farming where you have to wait for your crops to grow and then get your yields. Right. Cash, right. cash down. This is yeah. cash and carry. Yeah. But I have but a quick no. follow-up for mm -hmm. you. You, you. You said something, and I want yeah. to bring you back to it. You said, I can easily be bought. The chiefs can easily be bought. Yeah. 
I understand the reality of where we are economically mm -hmm. and how easy it is for people to ponder on these things. But you're a member of parliament. Mm -hmm. you, you, you are primus inter pares on so many layers and levels. You mm. represent, what, 300,000 plus people. people. Yes. If you are bought, then it means the whole constituency is bought. And that everyone is, that is why... So, so should it be that easy? Because we know the chiefs are getting bought. Someone was asking, was it yesterday, that ah, but when the cars are, ex are bringing these, you know, heavy machinery and the rest, why don't people see that these things are coming? Doesn't the chief see that, mm. ah, in my backyard, someone is using an excav excavator? Is the chief blind? Is the queen mother blind? So... But, but why is this so easy and how can we deal with this? So, so as, as I'm saying, you know, we, first of all, we need to admit we have a crisis and, and, and it's very important that uh, what I'm saying with regards to the appropriate compensation to people who we are going to devote to illegal mining activities are, you know, well endowed and not just the endowment because when it comes to the Drug Enforcement Unit, they are checking every kobo that goes into that person's account. So once you are employed to deal with mining, <laughs> you, the officers, there are about 10 officers checking on you. How about those who keep it at home? We no, 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 I mean, listen, <laughs> listen. You, the thing is that you, 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 you the officer, <laughs> if there are 10 people monitoring your activities, you dare not, anyway. you dare not. And, and, and I really think that you know, until we, we, we get to that level where we see this as a cancer, and, and it is a cancer because the activities of mining is going to increase or has already increased the cancer cases in this country and, and is a huge burden on us. Right. Listen, uh, the mercury is causing havoc, and as for the death toll with regards to those who die on site based on bad... Uh, you know, mining equipment, exposure, planning, exposure, cyanide. all of that, you know, that, that is one, one bit. And, and, and I really think that uh, mm. it's unfortunate that well-educated people are not appreciating, uh, the, you know, the, the, the true challenges because, I mean, listen, You've if, used two words to describe it, a cancer and mm -hmm. then it's a crisis. So as we speak mm -hmm. right now, um, we left the fight to leadership. It appears leadership couldn't um, complete or give us the results we wanted. So CSOs, individuals, citizens mm -hmm. have stepped in. As we speak, there's a call on the president to treat this as a, you know, an emergency situation. There's a call for a ban, complete ban, on all small-scale mining activities temporarily to reassess how we can restructure to ensure that this canker that you say, eating at the fiber of this nation, can be solved. So I'm Where do you sit on that call? I'm, Yesterday I'm, we engaged, yeah. um, I think, the General Secretary of the Small Scale Miners, and mm. they were vehemently disagreeing that there shouldn't be a ban because then some people will be put out of business. And, you know, small scale mining is not illegal mining, trying to make those differentiations. But where do you sit on that call? Should the president actually declare a state of emergency so that we can fix or tackle the situation head on? And then we we'll come to Bauer I, I, I think that. Listen, job creation has been looked at. Government has provided some ways and means to empower small scale miners. But you get the miscreants, the boys boys, who <laughs> would want to venture. And, and, and what I mean by that is that, you know, local boys who, you know, feel that the earth is theirs. And, and they can go and do whatever. And, and when you look at some of the videos, you know, be, because of social media, young boys can say things that I couldn't have said several years ago and, and have serious decay in terms of respect for authority, respect for the <clears throat> earth. And, and you see, I think our culture too has to be looked at. When I look at the Asian culture a little bit, I mean, you know, the Japanese, and how they respect nature, the yin and the yang, those things, we may have to go back to it and imbibe into people that respect for, for uh, Yenara Yasase, you know, that, that song, that respect for it. And, 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 and when I say this, that the painful thing is that very well-educated people in this country who I thought 
would be the ones, the guardians for this nation, uh, somewhat have disappointed us. And I, I will stretch this to the Ramza site, you know, where, excuse me, and, and, and this is me doing what I shouldn't do, but I'm an environmentalist at heart. Uh, you know, places that are reserved worldwide for birds and for nature. Flora, fauna. Have been taken over. And, and, and I know that when I go there, you see top military people, top governmental people, top judiciary people. So then I ask myself that question as an ordinary Ghanaian, as an ordinary citizen that, ah, these are the people who are supposed to guard this country yeah. against all these things. And, and listen, uh, elsewhere, people bequeath millions of dollars to preserve land. For, right. for, so, so, so what so is dog, different about us? So, dog, the more people <coughs> add their is, voices to this call, the more pressure we mount on the precedents, then maybe we have a chance to actually, you know, tackle this head on. Where do you stand? I, Should we I declare a state of emergency and ban all illegal mining or small scale mining activities so that we can do a reassessment and just figure out how we the, want the, to? The it? reassessment is not needed. We know the solutions. What and is and the I, solution? I, I believe that. Uh, banning is an archaic uh, ways and means. What we need to do is to, one, empower appropriately <clears throat> so that the appropriate technologies are used for mining. When the appropriate technologies are used for mining, this damage to water bodies will reduce. And, and I believe that, you know, <laughs> as a risk government also has to take. Maybe government needs to go full vim into mining and, and then employ these boys who would have rather gone and done mining on a small scale level. And, and, and that, that needs to be looked at. And then in concluding, let me add that all the revenues from mining, a huge amount of that now, if I was president, will, will dedicate straight to Ghana Water uh, Company. I mean, now. Because, so no, so because, no ban for you then? So that, because the solutions are there. You, I, I'm, I'm, because listen, when you ban, it's like banning alcohol in Chicago. People then even were making more money from illicit alcohol sales. So, so when you put a ban, you even rather, uh, you know, make the criminal activity more attractive for some people, some bad boys like Bongo uh, and, and, and things like that. They, they, well, some, you say bad boys like Bongo or bad boys. Like so, so, no, he's so, so, me, so, <laughs> so, so, I, I, I can't use Bawa, you know. So, so <laughs> my, my, my thing is that. Looking at other things that were banned in the past and, and the fact that people <coughs> would still engage in it. And, and mind you, when you do it, then the gold pricing will be so high and, and, and those who go in will okay, go Doc, in. Doc, you, fine. Let me come to Edward Bauer. Um, I know you, I, I've seen you taking a look at, you know, some of what the fourth estate released to us uh, right. recently, and I, I you're, not that you, you're not supposed you, to be copying. You've, you've paid particular. <laughs> no, I would have gone there anyway. So yeah. you've paid particular attention to certain right. names. Yeah. Okay, but for you, this ban, yeah, is it workable? Yesterday, when we spoke to, I believe his name is George Ama. Mm. He made mention of the fact that we had enforced a similar ban during the COVID period, briefly, and per his view, it didn't yield much for small-scale miners. But the GMA is also saying that, let's have a blanket ban and then regularize so that we pick out those who are doing the right thing and those who are not. This is your area. What is your, your take on it? Ban or no ban? Thank you very much. Um, I will come and speak to that specifically. But let me also state very clearly that, as a Ghanaian, I'm scared. I'm scared because I'm not too sure exactly where I will go and what type of drink, what I will drink. So it is not, I had this friend, a doctor friend of mine who was talking about a clinic just by his area. Then he talked about why policymakers must ensure that these clinics are well, I mean, they should have some basic equipment because you are not too sure when you will be there and collapse and that they will need to resuscitate you before they take you even to a bigger hospital where you can pay. In the same way, you don't know where you will be and then you will have to drink water. You will mm. create an impression. That way you will buy, quote unquote, what we call the pure water. Yeah. My brief experience at FDA, where I worked before, before, long, long ago, tells you that these, these what do you call it, supposed pure water, some of them are not pure. Are not pure. Mm. And so 
I am scared as a Ghanaian that this is where we have got into. That's the first point. Two, I hear, and that is so sad for kids who are, who are yet to be born and who, are, who have been born freshly. Yeah. I saw the... Professor uh, Sampene. Yeah, I even saw the, the, uh, the, this thing that was done by Erasmus. Some, I think a year yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah. About kids being born with some deformities. Mm -hmm. no, but that's what happens. Yes. See? Two, yesterday I listened to Professor York, one of the executives for GAB, mm. talk about the fact that They've made some analysis of the placenta after kids have been born. Yeah. And you see the content of it, and you realize that this is a direct link to illegal mining. Mm -hmm. That is the danger in which we find ourselves. So it is a crisis that we all have to look. It is not just about the Ghana Water Company issue, about 40%, they now can do only 40%. Ghana Water has its own challenge. In fact, if you read the NDPC report, minus even Galamse, they can't account for about 54% of the water they produce. That's another problem we can deal with. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. if you look at it beyond just the Ghana Water Company issue, it is, it is almost like um, you just see a, a train moving towards you and you will have to take a decision. As, either you should jump away or you stand for the train to crash you. That's the way we find ourselves. Two, you ask, you say that um, a ban, that's the question you came to. Look. Let's put this in within the right perspective. If you look at the mining industry, for all resources, whether it is mining, it is water, we have always indicated that we want to have value retention because that is how the country develops. That's how people get jobs. If you look at the mining industry, for the large scale mining companies, like the Goldfields and what mm -hmm. have you, they are foreign companies. They are foreign companies. Where you see Ghanaians operate is the, what we call the small-scale mining. Because that's, that is reserved for Ghanaians. Mm -hmm. Most of the people who are calling for band, I hear, for example, I read and I laughed over it. The, the how do you call it again? Uh, Christian Council. Yeah. They said you should ban Galamsey. I mean, there's no, it is a redundant statement to make. Galamse is a crime. So there's no need, it's like saying ban. I think the yeah. intent of yes. it was ban small scale. It's a, yes, so it's a ban Galamse. It's redundant. Well, it's already a crime. Two, so when you begin to start talking about that, then we need to take a second look at this small scale mining company. These are people who have gone for very for loans. Now, if you look at the interest rates, now it's roughly about 30 something percent. The person takes it, mm. and then you ban the person. And then over the period, the person has to service this loan. It becomes a problem. You are creating even more hardship for the people that, who are already suffering from that. So that may not necessarily be the, the way to go. But we are all running away from where the problem is. That is the issue. We are running away from where the problem is. We all know where the problem is. Where is the problem? Look, when you, let's take arm robbery. We all know as a country that arm robbery is a crime. Mm. And usually when these people are caught, if they, are not, if they don't catch them and they engage in fighting, they kill them and nobody even investigates that in this country mm -hmm. because they see it as a high crime. When they are arrested, they are punished. Nobody has sympathy for them. I have seen even uh, uh, attorney, uh, attorney general nominees go before vetting committee and advocate for death penalty for armed robbers. I've seen it in this country, in vetting committees in parliament. And so that's a crime. If we were to treat, um, uh, what do you call it, galamsey, like armed robbery, we will not have this problem. Mm. But, but, but let me make a point. Interestingly, yes. Napo, today one of the papers captures it, and it, it's here. It says, um, galamseyers are Ghanaians. We won't shoot to kill them. Yeah, Napo. so, yeah, so. Why? Just because and, yes, yes. and I'm going to explain to you. And I, I understand where he's coming from. Mm. And I, I will tie into his, that his comment. Mm. You see, the arm robber comes, you know, if you take people like those who go to steal the plantain and other things, and they kind of say, wee, 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 wee. And people tend to draw a very good, even though they are, it's all stealing, just a different form of stealing. I don't want to use an arm, the other one goes and says that, look, I'm going to do. Yeah. But you see, people see not just the fact that you take the, the property, but the threat even to the life of the person who is being robbed becomes also an issue for discussion. Mm. In this particular case, it's the same thing. It's a threat to even our very existence. 
That is why it, I am equating it to the issue of armed robbery. Okay. And see, the reason why people, the police have the, the or maybe let's say the security services, have the free hand to fight armed robbery is because everybody has agreed that that's a bad thing to do. And so people who are supposed to take decisions in those things are not involved in it. So I'm not expecting, for example, a political appointee to take a gun to go and then be an arm robber. So you, they are not involved in it. So the security men... Or to place a lot of calls when an arm robber, an arm robber is, is called. Call. Uh, is called. Yes. That, oh, yes. let the person go. So you don't have but that. But in say you see that. So it is not also because the security men are not properly enumerated or compensated, as my brother wanted to say. It is because the operators within that particular industry... Have backing from, have political from the, the political, political edition. Mm. And yes, you are right. I, I was looking at the fourth estate investigations. And these are, very, these are things like, it's like when we're in primary school, usually, you know, you are in sections, red, gold, you know, there's a, if blue, blue section, we lose it. Maybe I say this week, blue in the rear. If there's a strong boy within the blue, and they say blue in the rear, you can say it. If you say blue, I rear. You see where you pass and go home. Mm -hmm. We'll meet you on the way and beat you. <laughs> because of that, everybody knows okay. who and who are involved in this. Okay. And nobody's saying anything. Look. So you agree why? that it's a lack of political it's will? Well, and let me to, make a point. Okay. You see, and I'm going to go to, mm. to that point. You see, this issue of fourth estate, it's not new. i give you a typical example. Because I had occasion, because I served on the Mines and Energy Committee until recently when it was decoupled. You know, because of our restructuring, our mining is standing on its own. So I served on that for about seven years on that committee. When the report came that Akonta, Akonta Mining Company, that, which is owned by the regional chairman of the MPP, mm -hmm. was involved in some mining activities in the forest, and that actually he had applied to the Minerals Commission. You remember the initial reaction that came from both the Ministry of uh, Lands and Natural Resources and the Minerals mm -hmm. Commission about the fact that they had not approved something. I subsequently asked Mr. Martin ABC at the committee meeting that I have heard, I have read this story. He is the regulator of the sector. What is his position on it? He said, oh, as far as they know, they have not issued any license to a counter. I said, fine. Beyond that, Martin Pebble and his group mm. have made further investigation, gone to see the activity being done in the Nimiri forest or whatever you call it. Yeah. And they have reported to the police. What do you say about it? His, his answer was that, that falls under Forestry Commission because it's in the forest. If you have a government that is not committed to even preserving, let's even say that they are uh, mining even in areas that have not been given concessions. Forest or farms that. You have a government that deliberately comes to Parliament in 2022 November and promulgates an ally that says that you have the chance to go into the forest and start cutting down for the sake of mining. Reserves. The, reserve because the LI, the LI twenty, yeah, forest reserves. Forest, yeah, because you should see the LI, the LI. Uh, I, what think, do you call I, it? I think that thing is one of the most, I'm sorry, bogus, mind-boggling things that I've ever heard. The LI While others are protecting uh, yes. Ramsar sites and yeah. forest reserves, even look at the recent talk about the Achimota forest. And you see, just on news file this past weekend, again, Erastus Asari, don't go in the the discussions there. Akonta mining, getting caught, violating the government's buffer zone policy at the Tano River. And I asked myself, I'll, I'll just say this, we can play all the games we want. I was sharing with you yesterday, sweetie, how in the Netherlands, the last time I was there, people were telling me that they can drink tap water, they don't need to buy any bottled water. Tap water, clean yeah. enough, hygienic, healthy, without any side effects. Tap water. I, I dare not do that in Ghana. Hmm. Oh, even, I dare not. And, and to make it worse, forget even the areas where the tap flows. Because nowadays, we struggle, and we know it's part of these. How many times <laughs> do I get water in maybe a month or so? So I have to harvest water. But recently, I went into the eastern region. I was heading towards the Safari Valley, about a kilometer or two. We saw, so it's not, it's sort of like an underbridge sewage system or whatever do you know that that was what people had lined up with gallons and bowls and they were fetching to go and use for their household? I mean, you see these things, but we saw this physically and we were in shock. 
you see it in many places, especially up north and all of that. Imagine, as for the places where there's the tap flows, that's even, imagine the places that don't even have those systems and have to rely on those and what will happen to them. Look, you, so in the so north, in, so you in, take the north. In the face exam. of all this, you both say that the <clears throat> ban will not do anything. So in the immediate, I mean, right now as you speak, how do we get these illegal mining activities and small-scale mining activities that are near uh, or on water bodies and near in our forest reserves to halt so that at least the damage can be reversed. Look, for look. The, I mean, I'm, I'm talking about temporary. One, one we option. We cannot ban it okay, forever so you, because, of course, we can't leave the minerals in the ground while we are suffering, you know, suffering yeah. and poor. So we um, need to get the minerals out. I, but in the, in the mm -hmm. moment, we are facing a crisis, and you both agree. Mm -hmm. But you're saying that a ban will not do us good? I think, Briefly, and then I we think, move on to other I think things. we need to mm -hmm. learn from the Californias and, uh, you know, the Colorados. Uh, the gold in, rush in, and everything. In, in, in the sense that... Yeah. You know, this is not new to the world. <clears throat> People go, but the technology that is used needs to be brought to the local boys. And, and that is where government has to invest. So that, forgive me, I mean, we need to empower the young guys, though they want to engage in mining, we need to empower them with the appropriate tools so that they can do a better, proper job not with the dynamites, not with the you know, damage to water. Because you know, the, 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 the water really comes in in the processing, you know, where they have to wash, wash, and wash. And some of them are doing you know. it in, in the river bodies. But, yes. but, but you see, I disagree with you slightly. Here's why. Mm -hmm. You remember the gold catcher thing? Mm -hmm. Correct. Gold catcher. And we're even claiming it was Ghanaian when it was actually made in South Africa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But how much does it cost? And how much did we claim it was costing? Even when we said we're bringing them in to distribute. You must know about that. So even there, where you are claiming that, oh, the gold catcher equipment system is a better system so that you don't engage in all this pollution, pollution. you can identify and all of that. We are milking the state. I mean, <laughs> I... Well, I, okay, I, we, I, we I still think that we will move this on, but I really serious, think that the technology, we all agree that, yeah. the technology mm. that the boys are using needs to be improved. Uh, and I, I really think that that is something that government needs to look at. Because um, as part of all of this, if these young guys have a better processing arrangement, or what we can do is that government may have to have depots where they can process and make sure that the yields go based on what they get from what you bring. I, 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 I know they are trying this community uh, you know, mining concept, but it's still not catching on as it should, okay. you know, because people don't want to do regularization and all of these things. Look, it is costly. I'll just okay. tell you, I'll just tell you, you see, everything is leadership. Everything, yeah. everything is leadership. Yeah. If, for example, you, you, you have a president who hinges his presidency on such a thing, and then your own officials, appointing of officials, are need in situations like this. And you, that's the least I expect from you. That you say, look, I'm hinging my presidency on the fight on that I'm saying. You may say that, oh, the fight is too enormous. But when your, your appointing officials are... Appointed are, officials. Oh, sorry, appointed officials are... are, are Alleged. I need. Alleged, the, least, uh, the least you can do is that, yeah, let's say it's alleged. The least you can do is to get, get them to stand Look aside. what your Asantehene did with those three the chiefs. chiefs. He just them. removed them. He said yeah. it will not be under you, his watch. You, 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 can, you, can you destroy the very, you, you destroy the land. You have the, the AMA boss being right. named in a decision. And the person still has a job this morning. And nobody cares about it. And when you ask him, he will tell you how he has, he has been successful. We spend millions and millions of CDs on this tree, uh, tree planting exercise that we do, which is yet but to be audited anyway. Some of the people who in the last tree planting were advocates. Advocate, mm. advocate. Mm. Spending see, millions. And they're the same people who are doing the same thing. We must pay so attention to, to what the president says. He says, no, you can't just accuse these people. We must, you know, apply the rule of law. And we must Benjamin. let the law work. <laughs> 
and we must, you know, let you them see, know so that see, we get to the bottom of it and know that. See, have you caught the person no, in Galatia? You see, you see, have you caught the leadership person eh? doing anything? You see, you know? le no, leadership. Eh? Leadership is saying He's that. fighting Galatia. It's not himself, about the person, you know? it's not just about the person committing the crime. The person must not position himself or herself in such a way that people have doubts about his leadership in that particular area. So yes, the person may not be, uh, what do you call it, directly or maybe may, may, may be falsely accused, but you have positioned yourself in a way that seems to compromise the cause for which your president is charging, as it were. And so even just with that, you can be asked to, uh, I mean... Right. For, uh, Gentlemen, I mean, it's...